Yo, what up, boys? We're back another review. This is a really interesting review because it's Befang versus Yero. So it's pretty much the best talent in the world versus the best Kiana in the world. Now, this review is really interesting to me because I play both those champions at a challenger level. As you can see on the bottom left, I mean, on the top left of the screen, I have two challenger accounts. And these are the two champions I used to be a challenger on my most played pretty much. Both mid and junglers. So I know how to play them. So I know from both perspectives how it feels to play those matchups. So, okay, so uh, Talon will always get Prowl in the matchup. And if you play Talon and you don't get Prowl, that just means that you don't know how to play Talon. Because level 1, you could just do auto Q, auto and proc electitude, and Kenna cannot do anything about it. Especially if you run Bone Plating, like Yero does. So in this setup, he always, always runs Bone Plating. Helps a lot. Bone Plating is a counter to Kiana pretty much, so it just helps a lot against Kiana. So, boom. Pushes on the second wave. Does not push on the third wave. Pushes on the second wave. Let's see what's going to happen now. So, to be honest, this is matchup is definitely Kiana favored. Um, I don't think it's Talon favored at all. <clears throat> Especially if Kiana goes uh, electrocute with last 10. It really helps to one-shot the Talon, even if Talon does the combo. You can see Befin going in here. Really nice combo proc to electrocute. Also, it's harder to proc electrocute on Talon than it is on Kiana. Um, level 6, Kiana has advantage. Overall, team fight is better for Kiana. I, I, honestly, I... It's just obviously the champions are really different in different aspects. Like obviously roaming is better for Talon. But for most aspects, like Kiana is just a better champ. Like for example, the team fight's better. Um I would personally say that the all-in is better. Uh I think the brush of Kiana allows her to also gain more time. You know, juke enemies easier than Talon. Um obviously more mechanics, so high skill ceiling, more options to do with Kiana. Just overall, the championship is a bit better in my opinion. Than Talon. But obviously, the, the, the trade off is it's harder to play, right? Kenna is way harder to play than Talon. Um, so, boom, Kenna went missing. I don't think Befang's gonna die with Soraka. I'll be really surprised if that happens, unless the jungle is there as well. But I don't think so. So, I think Befang recall. So, why would Befang recall here? Because it's gonna slow push to him. So, Befang's gonna come back right now with probably what? I would say two longswords, or maybe one longsword. Or maybe one longsword and boots. And the wave's gonna be in a good spot for him. So let's see what he does. Um, also, Befen went three uh, pots and Yellow went corrupting. So he's creating a slow push here. Kenna's back. So the, what does she have? Long sword boots or double long sword? Probably long sword boots, I assume, right? I didn't, I didn't see, so I don't know what she. I still didn't have time to see. I wish you could click so we could see. But either way, it doesn't really matter. So yeah, Yellow should push this and then look for either dive top with the release or just a reset. Bot's not possible with the current lave state. Okay, so you got you got yeah two long sword. Okay, good. <clears throat> okay, so he's gonna base here or look for a dive top, like I said earlier. Boom, jungle's here, but Elise is here, so it's a three v two. We definitely win this. You see him moving here. Can I can't follow up because the wave's too big on the turret. That's what it, that's what happens when you slow push. The enemy linear is stuck on the turret. Kenna now, Befang knows this, so he moves up right now. So Kenna is on the way up here. Never mind. Botches the play because they think they're not going to dive, so he's going to push the mid lane. The thing with this, if Yero does not dive top here, he's going to lose a lot. The reason is, Befang is pushing mid right now as we speak. Right? So Yero's going to miss minions. Let's see how much he misses. I think he's going to miss like five. Already, we missed one. We saw the map. Missed two. But honestly, he's going to miss them all. He missed, yeah, he missed five. Pretty sure that was five minions. Ah, uh, maybe not. Okay, there's, so there's six minions in a wave, and he got one. So pretty much, he lost five, yeah. So, okay. I would hard push this, and then look bot. Or just look at the option, see what, like, what you could do. That's what he's doing right now. And if there's nothing to do, I'll just recall for mana. So, that's not allowed. from The, the positioning here could maybe allow for a kill. Goes in here. We'll go for the W. QR in night auto and should flash out. Oh, what, what I don't understand. So, wait, okay, so he waits for Befe to have no W, not level six, so he can't go stealth. Now he does W, right? QR. Okay, there's one thing I don't understand about what he just did there is before, okay, Talon Q resets the auto attack, so like, why would he not auto before the Q? Like, to me, it doesn't make sense. Like, as you could see, he really presses W. And you're positioning himself, and he queues right away. Like, why, why, why does he queue right away? Like, auto queue, no? 
and then you have one, one more auto attack, right? And it actually matters because as you could see here, right? The, uh, the auto attack difference that we I, I'm just talking about would have been the difference between him dying here, right? Because now he has the night and passive on him. So it's a bit of a mistake in my opinion. Um, I think that was kind of badly played. And maybe Befang actually dies to the night as well. Like, let me see. But honestly, I think Befang dies to the night. I don't even think we have to go for the extra auto here. Like, and even the way it was played, like, you could still, like, if you want to go for the auto, you could really, like, flash auto right here. Fl flash auto and then you E out and you're, you live. Just like the way it was played overall, this is just not the best from um, all. I'm a bit surprised. This is a rank 1 player, I wish no subtitles to see what he's saying, because I feel like overall this was played pretty bad. Let's see now, I'm just going to push this. Slowly, Befeng's countering the push, so it's pushing to a Yero now. No adv advantage, I mean, Befeng has ultimate advantage, he doesn't have ult. Uh, I'm actually like just gonna look now because I actually want to see because like Befeng, I'm, I'm surprised Befeng doesn't go for the EQWQ out of the Q range of town because he would win the trade for sure. Now if he gets into the Q range of town, he's definitely not gonna win because town has bone planning. Olivia comes in. Feels like a mistake from Befang. Like, this should be a kill right here, no? Q? Right here. Uh, what, I, what I would do is WER right here on this wall, and he's dead because then Olivia's here, right? So I don't really understand why Befang. Or you don't even need to W. You could just ER right on this wall. Like, why did he not ER? Did I miss something? Did he, did, does he not have E? No, he does have E. Why not use it? I mean, that would really kill 100%, honestly. I'm not even trolling. <laughs> Bit surprised here, to be honest. Wait, did I miss, like, Befeng using ult earlier? I don't think so. Like, Befeng has ult right now. I'm a bit surprised now it's being used at the moment. Also, this guy loves this skin. I don't really, I, I, I don't think the things, the skin is bad, but like, it's definitely like, I, I don't know. I like, uh, even High Noon, I like High Noon better than this skin. I like, I mean, honestly, the best is the, uh, I don't even remember what it's called. The, the Talon skin with like, he looks like Assassin's Creed. I forgot, Endring Sword, yeah, Endring Sword is definitely the best for sure. I don't even think it's close at all. I mean, it's really passive now. It's not really because they're passive players. It's really the new meta now. Like mid lane, it's just kind of like people farm. They don't really do anything and stuff like that. So I don't really blame them for that. We'll skip here. So obviously, he's going to go Prowlers. This guy goes Prowlers like every game. Does not really go Eclipse at all. Sometimes goes Gorging here depending on the game, but not really often at all. I tested Gorging Cure Talon after the update, and honestly, you, you just do no damage. It's I don't really think it's good. I think it's pretty bad. Looking for roam here. I mean, we could kill if Chen has no ult. If she has ult, it's definitely not possible, but let's see. He goes in here. She grabs the plate, goes over the wall, and yeah, he just gives it up. There's no way we kill here. I mean... So we get the wave, we go back mid, and we get we get more minions that way because we could shuffle between two lanes. 
doesn't want to get cheese, so he goes around. I think he's chilling with bone planning, to be honest. I would not have went around here, but... I mean, this guy knows Kiana, too. Like, I was looking at his profile. Like, recently, this guy got challenged in Korea with, like, 78% rate or something like that. And I was looking, and his second most played is actually Kiana. So this guy actually plays Kiana. And he, like, still prefers Talon over Kiana. I mean, people know him as Talon, so it makes sense, but still, like... Like, if you play both... Like, if you only play Talon, I understand, but, like, if you play both... I'm kind of surprised you don't really switch to Kiana. Like, obviously, maybe you just don't like the champion, but, like, if you play, like, usually you like the champion, you know what I mean? So, just a bit surprised. Um, just gonna rest straight out of base. Don't waste time here. Team is fighting. Make sure you could get there. Yeah, and if you're on killing spree, that's pretty tough. Wait, is it? And if you support? It is. Uh... In terms of talent to the late game of this comp, sounds pretty hard. I think Lilia is pretty good versus Talon. Uh, obviously, Kana is good versus Talon. I think Anivia is not bad into, into Talon, especially with the new update. Well, I'm sorry. I have, I have COVID right now, so like I feel really tired. I'm not really that sick. But I just feel like hella tired, so I just keep... He has to flash that, yeah, otherwise he's done. But I think probably has Prowlers as well. And those Anivia ganks are like, uh, I don't know. It's like, you have to respect it, because you know she's not a but... At the same time, you want plates, right? So it's hard. What is he going to do here? He's going to go for the Lilia? Let's see. He wants to go for the Yala for sure. Go see the Yala. WQR auto. Flash is... Wait, 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 flash? W2 auto R Prowler. Okay, no. What am I budding? Oh, he flushed earlier. Okay, it's not. It's Prowler. It's my bad. So W Q R auto Prowler's a knight. Drops a kill. And I mean, the, uh, okay, that just described the states of assassins right now. Like I don't want to spend too much time on that, but it's like, bro, the man has to use W Q R auto in night Prowlers, and this guy barely dies. Like. And the, the talents are level up. Like, please. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I don't want to spend this video, like, crying about assassins being weak and stuff like that. But it's like, bro, this is ridiculous. Like, you put this exact same scenario with any other champion right now that are mid lane. And if they're not assassin, they most likely 2v1 this. Or at least one for one with poking down the Lilia and she's being low, right? Because she's an assassin, completely useless. Gets one for one when it should really not be one for one at all, right? A bit disappointing watching this, uh, and you know, Riot's not really doing anything about it. Beth ain't getting rich off the plates. Um, yeah, it, it, I'm, I'm just a bit like, oh, Beth ain't got really rich. He finished the turret. This is bad. Flashes on the Prowler's Cause. Gonna go for the full combo here. So let's look from Beth ain't perspective. Like, I mean, from perspective, other than Beth ain't, how fast the combo actually is. So if we look here, Befang does the classic Befang technique. So the Befang technique is he walks out to fake like he just does want to all in you, like like this walk he's doing right here, and then he walks back in and he just surprises you with the flash combo here. And actually, Talon would have died, but Soraka healed him. The fact that Talon would have died though, right here through bone plating, is honestly crazy to me. I'm not gonna lie, like this is this is crazy to me, and this is exactly why I think Kenna's just a better champ. Like. You just saw the damage Talon did on the 1 HP all off, right? Now you look at Kenna damage on a full HP Talon with, uh, with, uh, with bone plating. Like, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous. But Soraka heals, come through and heals and save Talon. Lilia comes in. He's gonna trade with Elise getting trained. She flashes in. Auto does not connect. And he escapes over the wall. I mean... No, that kind of damage is crazy. I'm not gonna lie. That was crazy. Yeah, so we see why he takes bone planning now, right? I mean, if he does not bone planning, I mean, he's dead. So, what's the combo's gonna be here? She has old no, probably. So, it's not gonna work out. Oh, he keeps chasing. It's not gonna work. Just down uh, goes here. He drops the pink. I think that's a mistake the way he played that. I'm gonna explain why. So, okay, if Tristana has ult here, probably does not kill. Because you could ult, and you ult, and you get behind the wall. So, the way I would have played that is the same shit. The same shit he did here is you drop the ping. But you don't want to eat over this wall. Because she sees you coming up. She could prepare, 
right? Or if this is a bait, there's someone right here, all fog of war, whatever it is, right? So what you want to do when you eat over those walls, you want to eat in fog of war. So you should walk all the way up here so you could eat like this or walk here and eat like this so she can't see your E, right? And then you could go from, you know, E here and then you go behind this and then you one shot without her seeing you, which is if there's someone bidding, right, waiting right here, it's going to reduce the chance of them killing you, going one for one and all that sort of stuff, right? So um, combo look a bit sloppy too. Um, obviously, it goes for the Q... WR Prowler Scott, WQR Prowler Scott just looks clean in my opinion. I don't really see why you would do this combo instead. It looks a bit clunky to me. Uh, QWR Auto Prowler Scott. Um, also, more time to react for her. Because you have to QW then R instead of WQR. Like a, maybe not. Maybe QWR is cleaner. I'm not sure. QR definitely reduces the, the chance of getting ulted away, but probably someone in chat told her told him that yeah, she just has no ult. Okay, go back mid now. We grab steel caps this game. Uh it's not bad. It's actually pretty good, but it's just Lilia's gonna do a lot of damage to him, but you shouldn't really be too worried about that. I would I wouldn't I wouldn't really mind that. Grabs one golem, heals himself, goes on the side lane now. So this is where the 1v1 with Kiana should be uh, should start to happen. So let's see here. Kiana goes stealth. She's trying to space her himself to drop the turret here. Cannot grab the turret, otherwise he's gonna die. Because the minions are gonna die, he's gonna start taking the turret aggro while Kiana's gonna ult him stun on the turret. Especially now turret takes more that do, do, does more damage, right? He's gonna clean the wave. I have a feeling he wants to base, but because the mana's getting low, yeah, we can't really do anything here. So he's gonna go for the Yumus. Kiana's gonna go for the serpents, it looks like. Not sure why. What Zeria is, is is this Zeria of uh, Shibo? Normally they don't build Shibo anymore. They go uh oh miss the cannon here. Just trying to cheese the cannon. I mean Beffing knows he's not gonna walk here. To, to be honest, I, I don't believe he one shots Ken at all. I really don't think so. I would be really surprised if he does. I'm not gonna lie. I don't think Talon has the damage to one shot Kenna. Kenna has the damage to one shot Talon. He just knows he leaves this here though. That's why he walks back. He has some bush, dodges the Q here, a level up as well. It's gonna keep Prima pushing and looking for opportunity. Uh, yeah, this is what Ely should be doing. She should be looking to dive here. The problem is really dive. It's really hard diving Befang, especially on the turret. If it's Befang, Ken, Ken is already hard to dive, but Befang is especially harder because he's just too good, right? So he, this is always what he does. He always hides behind the wall like that and he waits for opportunity to go in. Especially if she uses the double brush here, but she definitely doesn't. He's too smart, he knows. Beffing plays talent as well. So like this is a situation where both players really play both champions. So they really both know exactly what to expect and like what to do in specific situations. Goes for the stun and Nivia goes here. Wow, that was clean. So, okay, let's go over that. So E with a with a flash R Prolisca auto QW. Well done. So all that was possible because at least kind of created the pressure with Tom. So at least played that well. He's gonna grab the blue go top recall, get the Yumus. Yeah, I, I would like to ride to buff the Tali. Obviously, don't over buff it so assassins are really broken, but at least do something about it because I guarantee you that the reason that Beffing is hard stuck diamond one right now. This guy's in Diamond One right now. It's not because they're bad players. These are all. Play this guy was, used to be rank one. Befang used to be rank one, right? All these assassin players used to be high, really high rank, and now after the update and the, the other reset, they're all Diamond One, stuck Diamond One. Reality is, assassins are trash. If your if your class gets nerfed, obviously your rank gonna get hurt, right? Obviously, we're going to let them time, see if they do better. Obviously, they're not going to be hard to like D1. They're going to climb for sure. But, uh, you know, Befang always used to be top 10, top 15. I definitely don't think it's going to be happening anymore. From my experience playing Challenger with Assassins now, I am... When I say, like... Okay. In my experience, like... It's it's borderline unplayable. Not even, like, it's bad. It's, like, unplayable. Like, if I play it, I'm, I'm, I'm like, inting my team. Like, it's, like, so bad. Like... I play Ken, I play Victor. I mean, I play Ken, I play Talon. They didn't mean as like Victor, Anivia, you know, all those, those champions that do really well, right? And I mean, I just get Mega Gap. Like, it is what it is. It's kind of Mage's, uh, Mage's in like boring meta right now. Like, people who do nothing and, and win, you know, like Kel, Vagar, all that, that, that crap. But 
Personally, I don't like to play those champions. I think it's really boring. I don't know how people do it. Um, but yeah, to each your own. I don't think Riot's going to be buffing assassins anytime soon, to be honest. So, I think we'll have to wait a long time. Team's on Baron, so he's going to rotate here, go to the Baron. Definitely, uh... Nah, this is looking impossible, I'm not going to lie. It's going to go on town. Drop the Prowlers, and the wall blocked the Prowlers. I've never seen this before. Now, that's crazy. So he ults because he thought the Prowlers would go, but... No, that boy got pranked, man. God damn. Dies by Zeri. This is looking like a pentakill for Zeri, to be completely honest with you. Goes E, but the wall puts the wall on cooldown. Zeri flashes in. A bit too aggressive. Oh, I feel like Zoe threw that so hard, though. I don't know. Gonna go here. Wait, the Ignite gets the Tristana. I did not see the Ignite. Let me see again. Q auto Ignite. Nice. Grabs the egg here. We're gonna get the double here. Boom. Big shutdown. That's a that's a massive amount of money that he just got. So here's the thing. People on town love Edge Knight. They love it. Especially this guy. The, the, the thing is, Edge of Night is a terrible item. I've been seeing this for years now. It's been years I've been seeing it. Edge of Night is terrible. If that's me, I suggest people to always go Grudge turret now, even if they have no armor, because their base armor is so high that it's going to be profitable and it's going to be worth it to buy it. Now, like I said, they love Edge of Night, but if you look at enemy comp, all of us have a lot of armor, right? Lilia bought Orglas, right? So I would personally go Grudge. Now, let's see what he's going to do. Is he going to go Edge of Night or is he going to go Grudge? Let's see. I think he's gonna go into night. Oh, I hate to see that, man. I, 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 just, I don't, I don't know why they do that. I, I, I don't know. I don't know why they do that. Oh, China, China loves Edge of Night, bro. They really do. Uh, I don't know. It feels so like uh, I feel so. It just triggers me because every time I see someone buying Edge of Night. Okay, this is the real reason why Edge of Night actually triggers me, like for real. So people who watch my, my videos often, they watch my stream, whatever. Um, by the way, free free me, bro. I don't know why I'm still bad on Twitch. This is some bullshit. Free me, bro. But for people who actually watch me, they know how I age at a night. It's like, I really hate it. And then I'm low-key triggered when I see people people buying that, that at night. Because on my last game, the Challenger, if, if you know, you know. But like on my last game, the Challenger, you know, when I had two minutes to wait for Challenger. And I was so like excited to win. Like I was so like stressed and like pumped, whatever you want to call it. That when I recall... So for the last team fight before the two, the two minutes was over, I bought Edge of Night. And people who know me, they know I hit it. I never buy that item. But I was like so like clicking so fast that I just get the fuck out of base to win the game that I bought Edge of Night by mistake. And ironically, like I got watched it after by the locks, right? And people who know me know I, I, I prefer Dead Dance or Maul over Edge of Night all the time, right? He's dead here. So if I actually bought Maul like I should have bought if I wasn't fucking pressed, I would have actually lived and would have probably won the game and I would have probably got Challenger before the countdown ended. So that's really the real reason why I fucking hate Knight. So fuck you, Knight, but it's fine. Let's skip now. Okay, Dragon's in 30 seconds. Gonna get the Pro mid here. And I mean, uh, there's uh, another example right here. We saw why Knight is useless. Like, it, there's, no, there's no defensive at all. If you get caught, you get caught. You still die. Knight does not save you at all. So we just saw it right there. Him dying. Knight did not change anything whatsoever. So yeah, just hate it. It's kind of the same concept with Crown, right? I, mean, I think that's why Crown overall is not built. It's not because the item is not bad. It's because... It just, it, I mean, it is because the item is bad. But it's because it's yet procced way too easily. Like, anyone could proc your shield from far away. At least W. A Talon just slips you with W. A Zeri with the... I don't know what's your spell that goes in walls or whatever, the, whatever that is. Just destroys your shield, right? It just makes it useless. So there's no point of buying that item. And that's why nobody buys it, right? Like, right there, Talon breaks your shield. Wow, my item is useless. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it just doesn't really make sense at all. So, I find it's a bit the same concept for uh, Edge of Night. Right? Obviously, it's not a mythic, but you get the point. I'm going to farm the jungle now. I mean, the damage should be really low now because we don't have Grudge. I really want to see him do a combo on someone because I'm pretty sure the damage is negative right now. Also, another thing is the Lilia 
in China they always go uh so let's see did Edge Knight actually get him the egg let's see what did Edge Knight actually block here and was it useful well I'm not gonna lie I didn't see what it blocked I'm gonna be honest I have no idea what it blocked all right let's see the damage it's this let's talk about it Q W R waits for the W return to hit which is important then Prowler Squad auto and knight and gets away with the E on the Tristana, Q's over the wall, flash E, really clean. So what you could do on Tom is you could press E and then you flash, right? And then you're gonna buffer your E. So it means you're gonna E as fast as possible. So he Q's, then he E flash, instead of flash E, so he buffers it, right? And then he sleeps kind of mid hair, really, really well done. Yeah, and then you see him flexing the mechanic. What? Hey. This is a bug, by the way. And I keep telling Tom players that this is a bug, and he keep telling me, no, it's because your mouse is not in the right spot. Like, bro, this is literally a bug. You literally click over the wall. You could see the mouse. You click over. You should go over, and it doesn't go over. This is hey. a bug. So stop, like, oh, he, and he dies because of it. That's actually cringe. Maya. Yeah, that guy's tilted. Yeah, so stop. Please, it just triggers me when people type that. It's like, bro, are you using my mouse, or am I using it? Like, are you playing for me? Edge and I got pop. Let me see how I got pop. Let me see. E, Q, W, Q. And I just can I Q with another save them anyways. Surprised Kiana did not hold there, to be honest. Edge and kind of used to Kiana because she could just E and it probs the uh, thing. But whatever. Just enough flashes out. Okay, now it goes for the grudge. Whoops. Enemy team's on Baron. I need water, man. My mouth is parched. Gonna take the TP and just skip now. Because they lose Baron. And now he pushes mid and then goes to the Baron fight. Let's see what's happening. At least Orgoth slowly comes across. W. E. E again. We have a Janai. We could do a lot. Kappa. Gonna keep eating over the walls, here. Kinda should be here. Or Olaf is here. We keep dashing over. Wow. And just loop around, well done. I would push the mid lane here for sure. Okay, it's gonna reset. So let's see, base getting destroyed. He's gonna grab this top watch here. He needs to make a play to defend the game. E. Q R W. Wait, what was buffing HP? Okay. Q R W. Stopwatch to tempo, but still gonna die after that. Edge and I did absolutely nothing again once again. It's <laughs> just trolling on the TP. Uh, team wants to FF. So as you can see, like just because of the state of assassins, like he's eight and five right now, but like he's actually like no flame, like he's not doing anything, like he's he's, he's just useless. Like there's nothing that he's doing right now. That is more useful than the two seven jacks that they have right now. I don't even know if the ten jacks is two and seven. I think he is. But uh, I, I wouldn't even go the opposite the opposite way and say that actually Jax is more. Jax is two and eleven, and uh, I I think Jax. First of all, I think the two eleven Jax would beat the eight and five talent right now in a one v one if they're enemy team. That's the first thing. Second thing is I think Jax is actually more useful than Talon right now just because it's Jax. And he's a bruiser, and he's not an assassin. But uh, he's gonna set a stopwatch. He's gonna go for the uh, crutch here. He wants to go for the angle here. I would definitely would have proc the uh, G of the Tristana here. There it is. E R procs the G A. He's gonna run away. He's away. Does not want to fight. Pings the team off. Team's going in. Looks like team's in thing on the low key side of it. And yeah, they're in thing. So he did not want to fight. Zeri is gonna try to run. Nice, gets the all off, flashes the stun. Can I use them as a prowler? He's gonna go for the. Nice. Wait, what the fuck? Wait, Befeng was fully HP. Oh, no, never mind. I thought Befeng was like almost fully HP. Never mind. Befeng was low, so Befeng dies. Nice flash here. Nice prowlers as well. Needs to dodge the stun here. Legend I. W is not gonna connect. He's gonna E. He's gonna Q. He's gonna W. He's gonna get the X. He's gonna E over the wall. And then he's gonna get the kill here. Oh, Lilia is still alive. Is he dead? Oh my god, that damage is crazy. What the fuck? Wait, he had 700 HP and he died from that. Wait, what? He had 700 HP. Lilia hits him. And then... Bruh. 
Yeah, that's why they go, uh, they go Ludens. They don't, they don't, they don't even go, uh, the injuries over here. They don't give a fuck. Every, every Lily, every good Lily, every high Lily, they all go Ludens. And, and NA and EU, they all don't. It's, it's literally like culture difference, the server difference. Like any EU, Rift Maker, the injuries, China, Ludens. Straight up. Same thing for like Edge and Iron. Alright, let's skip here. The S Grudge finally gets the reduced ceiling. Was that really the play? What, what, what would I buy? What would I buy? Uh, honestly, I would definitely, like, if that's my build, I have the exact same bait, remove Edge Knight. Grab me BC for sure. This game, I get BC. And then it's either uh, DD or Ma, either one. I would have grabbed BC over Edge Knight 100% this game. I mean, look at all of Hydrum. I mean, we have uh, st uh, Steel Caps. We have Red Winds. We have the Bremble. Then Lilia has uh whatever it's called or glass then dead dance of the canna and all that stuff but that ga whatever and then on top of that you have zeri who's going to benefit from it and jax was going to benefit from it right of you putting uh bc on on people to reduce their armor so overall the team benefits from it that's my point of bc compared to edge and i i mean nobody benefits from it even you you kind of get hurt from it because it's that bad but that's another discussion but, but let's, let's see here so he goes in e and that's what i meant when i said edge and i is useless by the way crawlers ease over the wall gets out but he's gonna get slipped and he's gonna die. So Edge and I was really useful in this case, Kappa. Let's see the team the team fight here. I mean the team's definitely not gonna win this. It's 45, but we we maybe a miracle happens. Ken has no ult. Jax goes in. Orglass is 20 HP, at least Orglass is 20 HP, and this is gonna be a, a loss here. Yeah, I mean it's champion death, bro. I wish I could see the damage of this game. I wish I could see the graph. To just prove my point. But yeah, I think assassins are pretty dead, guys. Uh, but this match was actually interesting to watch. And uh, thank you for watching with me if you made it to the end. I appreciate that. Um, free me. I'll be back streaming when I'm on bad on Twitch. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll see you soon, man. Take care, man.